I'm glad to be here with you again. Hello? There you go. Good morning. Uh, trying to remember the other one. I'm, I'm testing him. Son, joke for play. Wow, God bless you all. Uh, what was it? There's one more. Uh, yes, you. Uh, oi, oi, ne. Uh, Jesus loves you. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying. You can teach me the next phrase. I got it. No. Um, before we go into the sermon, let me pray for us. Lord God, we thank you um, for the opportunity to come before you uh, as a congregation. Lord, we thank you that you have loved this church, that you have blessed it, and you allow us to be a blessing to other people. So we pray for the 323 uh, street food fair. Or we pray for good weather and uh, just an opportunity to gather friends and family together. May be a time that we can just build trust and build relationships with those around us. Or we pray also for just some of the needs of our congregation. Or we pray for those who have uh, undergone procedures or, or are going to uh, have procedures. Lord, we pray for uh, safety for them. We pray for the doctors and nurses for skillful hands. Or we pray for uh, quick recoveries and we pray for a uh, return to full health. And we pray for those that have other health conditions or we pray for um, for transplants or for uh, just health in general as we have um, yeah, the just time of life and also just uh, for the different sicknesses that, that people have. Or we pray for some of our missionaries. Or we pray for Esther as she reaches out to the caregivers in Taiwan. We pray for the hopes in Ukraine as they look for a building to house their church. And Lord, we continue to pray for our own church. Lord, we pray for opportunities to reach out to those around us, those that we know, or those guests that you bring to us. Lord, may we just share a, a little about what you're doing in our own lives with them so they may have hope in you. Lord, we thank you for these things. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this morning, we are going to be going through this passage on prayer. And so, because we have the monthly prayer meetings at the end, the last Sunday of each month, we want to have a time to share about, well, how should we pray? And so, the other thing we're doing, though, is we're also doing a Bible reading plan. How many of you have been reading your Bibles? Oh, okay. Um, you don't have to. That's good. Show of hands. That's great. I wasn't going to make you identify yourselves. It's okay. <clears throat> I know reading three to four chapters a day is it gets it's pretty difficult. 
啊，或者對於某些人誒、啊、一日讀三章聖經會係誒、啊、有啲難處。Uh, my encouragement to you is to try to read at least two passages or two chapters a day。所以我誒、啊、希望你可以最少都可以讀兩章聖經一日。If you do that, you'll get through the Bible in about a year and a half。如果你咁樣做咧，你可以一年半以內咧就可以讀完全本聖經啦。Or the other method you can use is to read two pages。And that'll get you through your Bible in about a year and a half. If you every day read two pages, ah, two two pages, then you can read it in a year. See, James is having trouble with this because I didn't have any of the scriptures for him. He didn't have any scriptures for me. He didn't have any scriptures for me. So my encouragement today for this message is that I'm going to try to teach you two things. I today, the message, I want to teach you two things. One is how to pray. 第一樣咧就係點樣嚟禱告 ，and the other is how to study your Bible。第二樣咧就係點樣嚟啊研讀聖經。All right, so if you have in your bulletins, you had a second sheet of paper. It's called、uh, How to Study Your Bible, and Jennifer and、um, Peter and I think Hong Jun help translate that. 啊、uh, ，你喺你嗰個單張裏邊咧有張白紙，就係講你點樣嚟啊研讀聖經嘅。咁啊 ，Jennifer、Peter 同埋一班人已經幫我哋譯成中文啦。And we call this the inductive Bible study method。呢個就係係點樣啊叫做啊歸納式查經法。When I do my messages, I go through this same process。當我準備信息嘅時候咧，我都同樣用呢個歸納法嚟做嘅。Um, my process has a couple more steps in it, but basically it's this. 我雖然多兩個步驟嚟做，但係咧呢個應該已經係我哋所行嘅啊步驟嚟嘅。So when you read your Bible, there's three questions that you should ask yourself as you read the Scripture. 當你讀你聖經嘅時候咧，你問你自己有三個問題。It's what does it say, what does it mean, and you know, what should I do, how should I live? 咁就話經文喺度講咩嘢咧？經文嘅意思係咩咧？同埋我應該做咩嘢？ Sometimes when we read the Bible, we do we call it observation. The first one is we say, "What does it say?" We read it. 第一样咧就系话我哋点样观察，我哋读紧咩嘢啦。And we jump all the way to application without understanding what it means. We just say, "It says this, so I should do this." 有阵时我哋睇到观察之后咧，即刻去应用啦，咁就冇解释到或者系诠释到究竟嗰个经文系讲咩嘢嘅。And sometimes we skip that middle step, and that middle step is important because sometimes what we read. Isn't exactly how we're supposed to apply it. We have to think through exactly what does it mean to us in our time and and day. 有陣時我哋由第一個步驟去跳到第三步驟，就忽略咗全譯個步驟，咁變咗咧嗰個應用咧未必啊準確。So when we talk about what does it say, this is the in English we call it the inter interrogatives, or we just say who, what, when, where, how, why. 咁咧，亦都有其他嗰啲問題嘅啫，人物、事件、時間、地點、方法、關原因。你問呢啲咁嘅問題。I, I know that doesn't translate well into Cantonese or Chinese, but that that's you know they're all W's except for the how. <笑>全部咧，如果英文咧，就限辦都係 W 字頭開咗，除除咗 H 同埋啊，除咗 H 一樣。Right, the the point is to say, well, what are the questions I have? What is how are the things fit together logically? Or How? What does this word mean? That that's kind of what you're asking about. It's what are the questions I have about this passage. So you 睇咗呢個篇經文之後，你就話我有啲咩問題咧？究竟呢個講啲係咩嘢？嗰啲文化係點樣邏輯？又點樣樣嘅咧 ？And after you have all your questions, you start saying, "Well, what does it mean?" 你睇曬呢啲問題，問曬啲問題之後，就話究竟係咩意思咧？ And this is where you need to get Bible translation or commentaries or dictionaries. To help you say, well, what is what did all those questions? What does it mean now? Um, so, 有陣時咧，我哋需要有啲聖經嘅誒注譯本啊、釋本啊、詞典啊、誒修誒研修本啊咁樣。This is where a study Bible comes in handy. 所以而家咁嘅時間咧，你如果有個聖經研修本咧，就好好啊，會好大嘅幫助。And Uncle Philip told me he has a good Bible app that has commentary on it. Ask him for that Bible app. Philip 咧有個好好嘅 app 嘅，就有除咗有經文之外咧，亦都有研經嘅方法嘅。Right, and so you're trying to find out as after you read the text, after you read your scripture, you say, well, what does it mean? And we're trying to find out what does it teach me about God? What does it teach me about Jesus? What does it teach me about Holy Spirit? What does it teach me about man? 
所以我睇完个经文之后咧，我就问睇下对于关于神、耶稣、圣灵同埋我同埋人嘅有啲咩教导啦。And also, you look for what what are the promises there? What are the commands that I'm supposed to follow? What are the examples that I see, or what are the sins I need to be aware of? 亦都提提到圣经对有啲咩承诺，有啲咩命令，有啲咩例子，或者有啲咩罪啊，我哋需要啊离开嘅。Okay, so after you've done that, then you say, well, how should I live? What what should I? How do I apply this to my life? 喺做完晒呢啲步骤之后咧，你就话我点样可以用呢啲嚟嚟应用喺我哋生命之中？ Now, what changes do I need to make? 有啲咩转变我需要喺我生命之中 ？Okay, so you know the method, right? What does it say? What does it mean? What do I do with it? 所以你知道呢三个步骤啦，究竟系咩意思咧？睇咗啲咩嘢啦？嘅点样应用法 ？Okay, so now we're going to apply this to the scripture. 咁我哋就用呢个归纳式释经法啦，就嚟去啊解释个圣经啦。I'm sure there's a familiar scripture with for some of you that this is right before the Lord's prayer. These 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 verses are in the Pentateuch before Jesus said them. Okay, so I have James, teacher James, read this verse five. Ah, Matthew, 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 All right. So, what are some questions you have? What are some questions you could come up with? So, you 听咗呢个经文之后咧，你有啲咩问题咧 ？It's okay. You can you can talk back to me now. So, what what are some questions you might have? 而家系可以你讨论嘅时间，有啲咩问题问咧 ？Go ahead. Hang on. Just hang on. Go ahead. It's okay. 可以问噶，唔使怕丑。I know you're all thinking it, but you're not wanting to say it. 知道个个都系谂紧噶啦，但系就唔想讲啫。All right, we'll go on. One of the questions you could ask is the very first part, the very first section of this scripture. 第一个问题你可以问嘅就系喺最先，诶喺个边经文最先嗰段。Okay, when you pray. 就系你何时祷告，你当祷告嘅时候。What does that phrase imply? What I, I don't I don't know if there's a different emphasis in the the Chinese, but what's what's the assumption here? So he said, "You pray at the beginning of the prayer. What are some things you can think about what to do?" Ah, audience participation. Oh, we have to we're gonna have to train you guys for this. If you don't ask, he will train you to ask questions. It says when, not if. He says when, not if. 当你哋祈祷唔系话你如果祈祷嘅时候 ，it means that we're supposed to be praying。个意思就系话我哋应该就系祷告。Right, so if 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 the word was if in English, that means it's a conditional phrase. It's if this happens, then you know this is how you should do it。如果你话佢个嗰个经文系话 if 咧，就系话如果你祈祷嘅时候咧，咁变到就系 option， 好似系。即係你可做可可可以唔使做嘅，但係佢就話 when 就係話你祈禱嘅時候你要祈禱。I think you said my next point already. So yeah, when it's in the words when, it's not an option. It's you have to do it, or you're expected to be doing. 因為神咧係係要你咁樣做嘅，唔係話一個誒選擇題。Right, that it's part of your spiritual life. 因為係你個屬靈嘅生命嘅一部分。Right, so if we're not praying, then we're not. Fully living out all the things that God expects us to—that we're not quite fulfilling and having a, as full of spiritual life as He He wants us to have. If we don't pray, God will not be fully fulfilled because we don't have the full experience of God's blessing. Notice something else. So, sorry, I'm already behind. Notice something else. 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 Right. If we're only praying for our meals and we're only praying right before bedtime, is that enough? If we are praying for our meals and we're praying for our meals, is that enough? If we are praying for our meals and we're praying for our meals, is that enough? If we are praying for our meals and we're praying for our meals, is that enough? If we are praying for our meals and we're praying for our meals, is that enough? If we are praying for our meals and we're praying for our meals, is that enough? Pray, pray continuously at all times. 
佢叫我哋唔可以停止祷告，随时随地都要祷告。Okay, I under God probably is understanding if you're trying to drive, probably you know don't close your eyes if you're going to pray, but I think He understands that. 虽然你话有阵时候我系揸紧车，咁我就可就唔应该话眯埋眼就祷告，不过其实可以开眼都可以祷告嘅。But the understanding is that we are in constant communication with God. But even more, here's even more basic question, you know, talking about definitions. Oh. Sorry. I go back one step. So we're talking about when should we pray? Any time. Any time is good. Morning, evening. When you're perplexed is a good time. When you're tempted, when you're prompted by God to pray, any time is a good time to pray. So you, the 早晨或者晚上，或者有困惑嘅时候，或者受试探嘅时候，被感动、被神提醒嘅时候，随时随地都可以祈祷。But even more basic questions. Well, what is prayer? 另外一个问题就系话乜嘢系祷告咧？ And these are different people's understanding of the way they expressed it. These are have have different people have different understanding. The first one is to express the heart of the person to express the heart of the person. The second one is to express the heart of the person to express the heart of the person. The third one is to express the heart of the person to express the heart of the person. The fourth one is to express the heart of the person to express the heart of the person. The fifth one is to express the heart of the person. My understanding of prayer is that you are able to communicate with God about anything and everything on your heart or your mind. 我祈我对祈祷嘅嘅嘅经验咧，就系话我可以随时随地可以对神啊倾诉我心里边嘅所有嘅话。Right, the idea that when we come to pray before God, it's not it's not a form to it. There are some things we should do while we do it. But there's not a form, but it's a this communication about all you are as a person to God. We okay, so what else can we? What other thing can we talk about in terms of well, when you pray or how should we pray then? Or in this case, how shouldn't we pray? Right, and so in this passage, Jesus is saying, "Well, don't be like the hypocrites." Jesus in this, in the fifth verse, he says, "Don't be like the hypocrites, like the pharisees, like the hypocrites." Yeah, for they like standing in the synagogue and praying, or they like standing on the street corners to be seen by men. They like standing in the synagogue and praying, or they like standing on the street corners to be seen by men. They like standing in the synagogue and praying, or they So the question that should come to mind was: Was Jesus against public prayer? So the question that should come to mind was: Was Jesus against public prayer? So the question that should come to mind was: Was Jesus against public prayer? So the question that should come to mind was: Was Jesus against public prayer? So the question that should come to mind was: Was Jesus against public prayer? So the question that should come to mind was: Was Jesus What does the Bible say? To well, let's apply it without going to the middle step of well, what really is being said there. So you see, you ah, see the Bible after you, you immediately just skip to how to use it. You don't see or understand the Bible is talking about what it means. So the key words there are hypocrites and then description of what those hypocrites do. So this is the important word is that the hypocrites are those who do what they are supposed to do. If you were to read a commentary, you could get a little better understanding of what's being said here. If you look at the Bible's translation, the translation will tell you what you pray when you pray. When you pray in the synagogue, they would have a select a certain person, and that person would be the prayer person for that day. In the synagogue, they would have a select a certain person, and that person would be the prayer person for that day. And it was a, it was a great honor. Um, and because it was a great honor, what happens when sometimes when people are put in those positions? Because 喺犹太教嘅会堂里边祈祷嘅人咧，系有一个系系俾人指定系叫佢祈祷嘅。咁呢个系一个好一个好尊崇嘅位置嚟嚟祈祷，所以就系话你个究竟你嗰个动机系点样样咯 ？Right, they want to leave a good impression on those around them。你系咪想净系俾第啲人见到你哇咁犀利嘅 ？Right, we all want to be liked
So they might use more flowery language. They might use bigger words. They might try to make themselves look more spiritual than they really are. Right, that's what the second part is that they just want to be seen on the street corners. Right, the Jewish people would pray at certain times a day. And so if you're a devout Jew and you knew that you had to pray at a certain time of day, you could either pray, you know, arrange your schedule so that people couldn't see you, or you could be walking down the street at the right prayer time and that you have to stop and pray because it's prayer time. Right, and so they, as they're walking down the street, they say, oh, it's prayer time, I gotta start praying now. So that what? So that people could see them. Right? Because they want to be seen as spiritual people. Right? And so those people, they received their reward in full, meaning that because they were being praised by men, that they received their reward in full. So okay, so was Jesus against public prayer? The answer is no, because even Jesus prayed in public. But he's against ostentatious prayer, meaning that you're showy prayer or you're trying to gain attention by how you pray. Right? The question is, are we trying to please men? Are we trying to look good before men? Or are we trying to look good before God? Right, so the, when we pray, it's not about the words, the language that we're using, but it's really about our heart intent. Okay, then Jesus goes on. He says, well, that's how you shouldn't pray, so how should you pray? Okay, so it says, go into your room and close the door. In the Jewish home, there is usually only one room, well, besides the front door, probably, there is only one room that had a had a Door to it. It's usually a storeroom. So is Jesus saying you all of us need to go into that closet here to pray whenever you pray? Right. This is this is where we start, you know, observation. It says don't you know go into your closet. That's the observation. And if we jump all the way to the application, it says you're supposed to go to the closet to pray. So this is where you need to take the middle step and say, okay, what is it really saying? So did Jesus always find a closet to go pray in? And if you read your scripture, you go, no, he didn't always go into the closet to pray. Right, he went off to secluded and lonely places to pray. And he went to the top of the mountain to pray. So there's something about the idea of being secret and kind of unseen. And maybe the best place thing that we could say is a, is a place that we can be alone with God. 
其实最好嘅地方就系一个可以与神独处嘅地方。That is a、uh, doesn't have to be always be away from people, but it has to be a place where you and God can be in communion or in talking with one another. It's a private, intimate moment for you and God. 其实你唔需要话一定全部冇人，但系你祈祷嘅时候，一个系一个安静嘅，系同神心同心嘅嚟对话。He says, "When you do that, this is the promise: God will reward you." This is the promise of God. He says, "If you do this, God will reward you." I don't know what the reward looks like. 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 And that's the application. We, you know, we observed, we interpreted. Now it's like be alone with God somewhere to do to pray to Him. This is what you observed. You observed. You read the Bible. Then you can have a clear answer. We need to be alone with God. Oh, sorry. I said that one. Okay. Then you can have a clear answer. We need to be alone with God. When we look at these two verses together, these two verses, verses six, five and six together,、um, we'll see that this is what matters to God. If you look at Matthew 6:6 and 6:7, then you will see that this is what matters to God. Right? That there is some consistency. That what do we do in our private spiritual life? It just overflows into our public spiritual life. What do we do in our private spiritual life? It just overflows into our public spiritual life. 呢度講起咧，就係無論你係私下或者公開嘅屬靈生命咧，都會係一次一同樣一樣事情嚟嘅。Right, that if we start doing things in our public spiritual life that we don't do in our private spiritual life, we are considered hypocrites by God. 如果我哋喺公開嚟嚟做啲嘢咧，但喺我哋喺私下喺屬靈嘅部分咧就冇做啦，咁呢個咧就係無善，係一個假冒為善嘅人。So again, it's an encouragement for us as we Seek God in private as we seek to live our lives a faithful life. That as we do that, that will then overflow into what other people see when we are in public. But if we are in private, our life is a faithful life, a true life. Then we will overflow into what other people see when we are in public. Okay, so let's go to the next part of this passage. Okay, so let's go to the next part of this passage. 你们祷告不可像外邦人，用许多重复话，他们以为话多了，必蒙垂听。你们不可效法他们，因为你们没有祷告先，你们所需用的，你们的父早已知道了。Okay, so we ask the question again: How should we pray? 亦都问呢个问题，我哋究竟系点样嚟祷告咧 ？Right, and so it says, do not babble and do not use many words. 呢度講咧就係話你唔好節節不休，死纏爛打，係咁講語無倫次。Right, so babbling means just well for them babbling meant they were trying to they were trying to figure out a way to force God to act. 佢呢個講呢個節節不休咧就係話想逼神做做呢呢件事。For example, they would say,、uh, you know, they're not praying to our God, but they're praying to their their pagan gods. 佢哋唔係話對我哋誒耶和華神嚟禱告，其實係對異教嘅神禱告。They would say, "Oh, I, I was very faithful this month. I, I went and did this many sacrifices. Um, can you, will you bless me because I did that?" 啊，我今個月好乖喎，你係咪應該獎賞我咧 ？I've been a very good person this month. I didn't hurt anybody, so you should, you should bless me. 即係我今日啊，我今個月都冇傷害過咩人，係一個好人嚟嘅。咁你應該祝福我啦。Yeah, so that that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to do what they call a contractual relationship with God, or their God. They'll say, "I've done all these things, so therefore you owe me these things." 好似你同一个立咗个契约咁样样，同神立立咗个契约咁，我做咗呢啲嘅事情咧，咁你应该应份嚟嚟祝福我。And they were trying to basically force God to act. 你系逼神做嘅，做你所想要去做嘅嘢。It's the same thing of、uh, being using many words. It's Is it is like repetition wrong, or is it you know, is it wrong to repeat or use a lot of words when you speak to God? If you use a lot of words to talk to God, and you repeat them and repeat them, is it wrong to repeat them? Right? Are we supposed to only use short, concise prayers? 
我哋系咪应该有个一个短短而系一个简洁嘅嘅祷告咧 ？Okay, so if you look at the life of Jesus again， 如果你睇耶稣嘅生命之嘅嘅系咯之后咧 ，You know there was a time when he was praying in a garden somewhere and he had to, he repeat the same prayer three times。你如果睇见耶稣喺啊，诶，三万年喺。哈哈西马利园祷告嗰阵时候，佢系向神嚟祈祷三次嘅。Right? Is it wrong for us to repeat our prayers？ 所以我哋系咪啊唔啱咧？如果系再重复嘅你嘅祷告 ？Again, the answer is no, but it's because of the again hard intent. What is the hard intent？ 个答案就唔系，其实你个心究竟系你嗰个意向系点样 ？Right? Because what what our prayers do? Is that reflects our understanding of who God is? We pray is What kind of God do you think He is? Is He a Santa Claus? Is He a policeman? Is He just waiting for us to do something wrong? Right? Is He just you know, just waiting for us? Oh, something wrong. You know, check. Ah, he was just having, just just having a cigarette, watching you do something. Yeah, do it. After that, not not right. Then check it. Or is he a loving God? So, is he a loving God? 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 Our understanding of God impacts how we pray. Right? If we feel that God doesn't know something, then we're going to have to complain to Him, or that we have to say, "Hey, God, um, you you must help me because I was a good person." If we know God, we know God, and we know all the creatures, then I have to tell all the things I want to do to Him. Look back at verse eight. Says, do not be like them. You can't be like them. Uh, for your father, your father knows what you need before you ask him. You are so used to your father. 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 You father. You are so used to your father. You are so used to your father. You are so used to your father. Holy, right? We know God is all-powerful, all-powerful, all-knowing, created the world. He is so great that we can't even put our wrap our minds around Him. He is the one who created the world. Very distant from us. On the other side, this passage, even Jesus says, you can call Him Papa or Daddy. The word Abba is Papa in in Jewish. 所以喺呢個經節度就話，耶穌就話你可以稱神為阿爸父或者你嘅父親。Right, that God is considered our dad, our daddy. 神係我哋嘅父親，係我哋嘅阿爸父。Right, for those of you who have kids, when they were really little, what happens when you come home? 如果你係仲有細路哥、細嘅細路哥喺屋企，佢哋你翻屋企嗰陣時候，佢哋會點咧 ？As soon as you open the door, you walk in. What happens? 如果你一開門入去嗰陣時候，Right, they come running up to you and say, "Hey, Daddy, Mommy!" Right, they come give you a hug. They will go up to you and say, "Hey, Daddy, Mommy!" Right, when they get to be teenagers, they look at you funny. They just kind of look at you and glance at you, and you have to go find them. If you're a teenager, you have to look at your parents. Right, you have to find them. 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 呢、这個就係呢俾神阿耶穌俾我哋睇見兩個唔同嘅影影像。Holy God, without sin, very big and distant from us。一個神性，一個好好似不可攀望嘅神，好離開我哋好遠嘅。On the other side, he's saying you can call him daddy. That he is your your daddy. That you want to go and chase after him and give him a hug. 第二個形象就係一個好似你個。好慈愛父親，你可以走上去擁抱佢。I mean,、uh, in my human mind, I can't actually combine the two thoughts. It's really two separate things, but I, I try to. 呢兩個形象係一個好唔同嘅形象，我好難將佢嚟接埋一齊嚟睇，但係我亦都要需要咁樣做。But it's easy for us to just put God as this distant, 
powerful person that might want to know us versus he's my daddy, the one I want to run to whenever I have problems. Yeah, so what do your prayers say about how you view God? So Because if God is a good God and God is a loving God, we can be confident that He knows what we need before we ask. Right, in the passage right after this, in, in chapter 7 of Matthew, um, he says these things. So if even evil parents know how to give good gifts to their kids, how much more so a good God that he will give good gifts to us when we ask? So again, I ask you, what kind of God do you have? So you how does that reflect it in your prayers towards him? Right, because God is this God that wants to bless us, that wants us to follow him and wants us to know him. Are our prayers reflecting that and our dependence on him, our trust in him? So you I mean, are we acknowledging our wants, our needs, our problems, and saying, God, this is, you know, I'm asking for your help. Let me see what, you know, let me see how you'll answer. So this is, this is my final understanding. This is where we come to an idea of prayer. So prayer is expressing our trust in and our dependence on our Heavenly Father. And I'm hoping that as we've gone through this, I don't want to call it a message, but a teaching, <laughs> that you can see how you can read your Bible, and get a better understanding of what it's saying, and then how we can apply it to our lives. So this um I hope that in your prayers that you'll see or that your prayers will reflect just how good and great our father who is in heaven is. That you want to run to him like a dad. That you be willing to pour out all of your heart before him. And that you'll wait to see how he will respond to those prayers, how he will show up in your life. Let me pray for us. Lord God, we thank you for sending your son so that we could be part of your family. Lord, help us to pour out all of our, our hurts, our wants, our concerns, whatever we have on our hearts and our minds. May we just 
pour that out before you in prayer. 天父,我們將我心裡面的,或者是所想所想的,有沒有痛苦,有沒有需求,我們都可以同你傾訴。And Lord may as we pour out those prayers, Lord, may we see just how you respond. May we see your fingerprints in our lives and may we know that you are a good and loving God. Lord, we thank you for being our Heavenly Father. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.